Hello everyone, and welcome back to Mr. Dark Spectrum. Identical twins are natural clones. They are formed by a fertilized egg divided into two separate individuals. While most twins go on to live individual lives, the story of the Gibbons showed that some twins are truly inseparable. This is the story of June and Jennifer, the Silent Twins. On April 11th, 1963, in a small town called Wells in Half Fort West, the Gibbons would give birth to two identical twins. Their name was June and Jennifer. They became known as the Silent Twins since they only communicated with each other. June was born first, but it was Jennifer who developed into the stronger, more dominant one. In fact, one medical expert said it seemed like Jennifer at times possessed her sister. Bouncing back and forth between being Jennifer and being June, the girls themselves described themselves as switching selves. Being the only black children in their small town, the girls endured racism at an early age. The ostracism and bullying was so severe, school officials allowed them to leave ahead of the other students so that they could reach their home in peace. This resulted in the twins withdrawing into their own world. They stopped speaking to anyone else. They communicated only with each other in private language only they could understand. A close study of that speech revealed it was rapid fire mashup of English and Barbadian slang. Therapists decided separating the girls might force them to re-enter the world, but it would only end up making matters worse. The girls were sent to separate boarding schools where they were treated into full-blown catatonia, neither speaking nor moving. When they were reunited, the twins isolated themselves in their bedroom, refusing even to come out for meals. During this isolation, they used their imagination to build a huge world in that small space. They invented complicated names and stories for their dolls. The fantasies included a certain ghoulishness with the demise of the dolls recorded in an official notebook, each with a specific cause of death. They were now 16 and surviving on public assistance. They chronicled their lives in detailed, separate diaries. Those diaries recorded a heartbreaking transition in their relationship. Instead of finding comfort in their closeness, they began to turn on each other. A entry from June reads, She want us to be equal. There is a murderous gleam in her eye. Dear Lord, I am scared of her. She is not normal. Someone is driving her insane. It is me, she wrote. They began writing novels again. The subjects were dark. An American boy addicted to Pepsi Cola who was seduced by his teacher. Another boy who surgeon father transplanted a dog's heart into his body. Their dark fantasies led to dark behaviors. They started drinking and using drugs. They broke into homes, smashed windows, and started fires. That behavior led eventually to their arrest. They were committed to the infamous Broadmoor Hospital, the high security mental hospital where some of Britain's most notorious serial killers were sent to live out their lives. In her biography, Wallace reports that in Broadmoor, the twins decided one of them would have to die so that the other could live. Jennifer, the stronger, more dominant one of the two, agreed to the sacrifice in this fatal pact. When they were nearly 30, they were finally released to a less restrictive hospital in Wales. On the bus to their new home, Jennifer laid her head on June's shoulder and said, At long last, we're out. That same night, Jennifer died. The cause of death was an undiagnosed infection of the heart. 
June was released a year later. In 2000, the New Yorker's Hilton Owls traveled to Wales to meet her. In his article, he describes a normal woman living a normal, if lonely, life. She visited her sister Graves often. It is inscribed with a poem she wrote. We once were two, we two made one. We know more too, through life be one.